Hi guys. Hi. Hey, hello. So before we get into kind of what what you've been going through the last two years and then kind of the album as a result, is I want to go back to the beginning a little bit. Do you obviously uh, the, how the two of you met? It's quite obvious, but um, <laughs> <laughs> <Take your mind. laughs> but, but do you remember how kind of uh, the friendship with with Saul and and kind of the musical um, connection started? Mm. I mean, I remember when I met when I met these guys. Uh, we, we, the musical connection, I guess, was there from the beginning because we met at a gig, okay. and it was our own gig. Mm. We were all playing, I think. Um, uh, Nathan used to come over to my house, and we would watch live leak um, <laughs> stonings of and beheadings and stuff like that. Yeah, good, good time. Talk about how we couldn't get laid and <laughs> <laughs> the mysteries of surrounding oh, that. It's true. <laughs> It's true as well. <laughs> I went on for a while. Yeah. Um, don't do it anymore, though. We don't do it yeah. anymore. Me and Nathan were in a... We were both in bands, and neither of our bands were going anywhere. And then we ended up in the same band for a bit. Mm. And that's kind of when we started playing together. But So was music, and then for the three of you, was music always kind of uh, a first love, in a way? Kind of. Yeah, it's a bedrock, for sure. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Also, the chuckles. We share similar chuckles mm. and generate each other's chuckles and then generate our own and pass chuckles to one another. And so, it, especially early on, is that kind of the, the, the <coughs> point of a band to kind of have a laugh and. and uh, Depends what band you're in. <coughs> it's definitely always been the point for us. Yeah, amusing. Ourselves. Even more, more, more than the music, really. Yeah, yeah. music secondary. <laughs> music, is, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a big, big joke. <laughs> but, but when you uh, then then you kind of uh, are joined together, what, what made it work uh, where other bands or projects kind of didn't? Um, I th maybe it's because of the sort of juxtaposition of characters and sensibilities, you know. Maybe it's to do with the. Uh, to the differences between me and Nathan and Saul, I think, you know, that fusion of, uh, of intellectual power, you know, on that level. Yeah, and a lot of luck. And a lot of, yeah. Well, yeah, we, we, we kissed the blarney. We kissed the people. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that is an interesting uh, thought because, especially when, when people talk about success, uh, most people will mention a bit of luck being in there, kind of getting noticed or, or having that kind of... Yeah, like when Thatcher right died, time. that was like our break. But, but was it really? <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, well, that was luck for us. Yeah, that was luck. We ended up on the front of the paper. Mm. So that was, quite, that was quite lucky for us, yeah. But <gasps> Cheers, Maggie. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, Maggie. <laughs> Did you feel like um, this was something you'd always had wanted to do? Getting into music and then... Um, I think we kind of gave up on the idea of being kind of like, I don't know, professional like kind of career musicians or something quite early on. And then just did whatever amused us privately. And, uh, you know, like, like ha created our own little environment and that was the important thing. And then eventually, naturally, quite organically, it grew into something else. It wasn't that deliberate, you know? Okay. So it was all quite, a, quite an ac accidental turn of events, really. We didn't think that people were going to be raving about the band, particularly. I mean, it was like songs about bombing theme parks and fucking little girls. We didn't think it was going to be some sort of like commercial smash at any point. <laughs> still, still isn't. It still isn't. <laughs> no, 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 you do have an audience. Uh, but we've got sense. an audience, yeah. And then, well, talking about kind of the, the type of music that you make, then, were you surprised? that? Or let me ask it differently. And this might be difficult to say about your own music, but why do you think people latched on to what you were doing? I think it was more to do, it's more uh, <coughs> that, there was, that there was very little else going on. Yeah. You know, I think, I think really pe people were interested in what we were doing and what we were doing seemed maybe, uh, you know, a little bit more, I don't know, I don't really want to use the word daring, but I can't think of an, any other word. Yeah, I think we live in a particularly tepid age. Yeah, so it, it, relative to, to everything else, it probably seemed quite interesting. Mm. But it's not, it was quite a, 
the bar was incredibly low. Yeah, it's been getting progressively lower for decades. So Some it's perfect for us. Fine. Yeah. But why do you think that is? And uh, I, I tend to agree with you in terms of where music is going, that a certain attitude is lost a little bit. But um, why do you think that is? Why are they, is it the business side of it? or? I think well, it's just a general homogenization of... <laughs> Go on. General homogenization of the, of the medium, really. I mean, there's no money in it. So there's, there, are, there are fewer interesting people with like, the money and the, 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 the means to sort of pursue this. There are less distinct voices. There's the scourge of political correctness at the same time. Uh, so it's like a shrinking... Uh, field of opportunities really all the time so i guess that's why unless it's kind of underground there isn't a lot of uh, will to sort of rock the boat you know so to speak if, if something if you've got a good thing going don't 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 fuck it up don't make any mistakes don't say the wrong thing don't risk making a fool of yourself all that kind of stuff there's like an extreme amount of anxiety about it all which kind of leaves us with these kind of shrink wrapped kind of like replicant kind of like artists doing the same regurgitating the same tired points and politics and, 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 and are never really actually putting their neck out at mm. any point uh, which I think is why it's so dull with this in mind then did, did you notice um some sense of pushback as you started to uh, gain popularity and, and because I can imagine b you're playing the same festivals as a lot of these bands that you that you kind of described so was was there a, a kind of a pushback or, or did you notice the industry being a, a tough thing to deal with well I don't really understand the question a pushback you mean like a well, sort of they, like a resentment of, of well, what we sense, stand for yeah yeah uh, I mean to an extent, but not really, no, I, I didn't feel like that. I felt like it was kind of the gigs for a while just kept getting bigger and bigger and, until the band kind of imploded. Uh, I think it wasn't, it wasn't a, a difficult thing converting people you know, into some sort of interest for the band because, like we said, everything else was so patently boring. No, but I mean more from, uh, from an industry standpoint. I don't know what did the industry push back on us. I mean, the, well, the, in, in the I thought they were quite. They seemed to okay. be quite into it. Okay, they were into it, and then they, you know, then they started signing lots of bands that had a similar ethos to us that came maybe out of South London in our wake. You know, so I think they cottoned on to the idea and immediately they try and commercialize it straight away, which is always what happens. Mm. Um, so no, I don't think there was a particular pushback. If anything, we, you know, they, they gave us money to do this at points. And then, uh, well, after you mentioned kind of at, at a certain point, uh, the began, band began to implode. And, uh, well, you've talked about this before, and the, the substance abuse is one of the reasons why, I suppose. Um, but did you see it coming? Did you see kind of the... Could you see it coming? Yeah. <laughs> could we see what coming? Kind of the, kind the of implosion the, of the band? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, over <laughs> Yeah, yeah def definitely. I mean, if you... On an hourly basis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was like one of them New Year's clocks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every day was... A day closer to destruction. <laughs> yeah, it was... Uh, yeah. It was surprising it kept going so as long as it did. Yeah, that was But it was a good real... laugh at the same time. Well, that, that's, <laughs> that, that's, what I, that's what I wondered about, because did you enjoy kind of the, that period? Because yeah. I can imagine it can... I don't remember, ways. like, not... Uh, yeah, I remember enjoying it. Okay. I look back on it and it's kind of <laughs> horrific, but at the time I thought it was brilliant. Wow, this yeah. feels good. It felt good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and if you look at, uh, back at the first two albums creatively, then and now with with a uh, different perspective, I suppose. What what is your assessment of, of kind of the work that you did I back then? Hmm. Well, I think it's representative <coughs> of uh, <coughs> how we were feeling at the time. You know, it's, and uh, I think it's about. I think it perfectly illustrates that. You know, that's yeah, it. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with, I'm, 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 you know, I'm... Uh, an honest representation of that period. Yeah. I think, which is all you can really ask for from an album, I guess. Yeah. So. It's not, it really doesn't matter whether it's people like it or not, or whether it's good or bad. It's just, it's kind of, it feels honest enough to me. 
Yeah, if you can still listen to it a few years later or whatever, and you're all right with it, then it's kind of kind of done it. It's just kind of a success as far as concerned. I don't really want. I don't really want to listen to it that often or really ever. But but you do have to play some of the songs live, then, right? Yeah, yeah we do. Yeah, a couple. Yeah, yeah. Less now that we've got a third album. Hmm. Yeah. Like good. So as as kind of the <coughs> the. the difficult stuff was going on was there ever a moment um, that that you thought well this band it's over we're, we're not gonna make music together anymore yeah yeah I, we, we, I mean i left the band and mm. uh yeah so yeah <laughs> so we thought well i mean we wrote everything so it was kind of like well that's kind of the end of that but we went looking for another deal anyway and thought maybe well if we could just get like out of london we could maybe salvage the thing and uh that's what we did you know we got our deal with Domino and then uh, rented a little house and a little studio up north in Sheffield and mm. started picking up the pieces. And now it just seems obvious that we were going to get back together and make another record. It seems like a no-brainer. But no, at the time it was definitely like, mm, are we kind of like flogging a dead horse here? Mm. You know. And then you were doing uh, your different things, uh, moon landings, and then uh, well, a lot more in Um Yeah. Lise, what did you what did you tell Saul to kind of convince him to come back, or was it not like that? Uh, it wasn't exactly like that. No, we were working on the Insecure Men thing together uh, in New York after the Fat Whites thing had stopped anyway, and uh, that was it. Was a different record in that it was all comp compartmentalized. You know, mm -hmm. it was definitely Saul's record, and I was just doing lyrics. You know, for some of the songs. So we had a kind of like mechanism where we were working together, but there were established roles and that kind of got rid of some of the f previous anxiety and animosities which would occur. And it just turned into a really kind of like quite a festive little session really. And we had a really good time and it just was just flowing quite naturally. I think because it wasn't fat white family and fuck, what are we going to do and all this thing. It was a real breath of fresh air. And around that time, we started talking about doing this one together for the first time. Yeah, and then they couldn't write enough songs, so they had to get me back. I think that implies some sort of uh, a half-truth, but... Uh, <laughs> no, but... <laughs> <damn it>. <laughs> I think... But there's also an element, um, because obviously you, you wrote a lot uh, for the first two albums, but then because, because of your absence for a while, Nathan, you took up a, a, a bigger role you in the You started writing right? songs in his absence. Yeah. There was a void to be filled, and that's where I tried to fill it, you know. You filled it right up, didn't you? I tried my best, yeah. But yeah, like, I mean, those are the two first singles off the record of the songs that Nathan wrote. Mm. But it's not like uh, filling it anymore, it's, it's like a new thing now, I guess. Well, that's, that's what I uh, was trying to get at. How did kind of the way you write songs and then uh, these songs came together on the album, how, how was that different than, than the years before? Um, well, because of the, the absence, me and Nathan were working a lot harder to like write more melody because that's pretty much all come from Saul in the past, you know, even the vocal melodies, I'd write the lyrics to a vocal melody that was already there. Mm -hmm. So uh, for me, I had to start writing more vocal melodies for a start, <laughs> otherwise there's not going to be, definitely not going to be any songs. <laughs> so, so I'd write the odd one on guitar, but I had to basically step up. And Nathan had to sort of step up and we had to work a lot harder. And then I think because Saul was completely wrapped up in Insecure Men, he came into the album sort of process a little bit later on, like before we started recording or anything, but me and Nathan were sort of like writing for six months a year or something. Mm. So he was kind of like coming at it like completely fresh, you know, and sort of trying to make sense of the ideas that we already had or come yeah. up with stuff, would, come up with stuff with, which would complement it, which was a complete... Mm switch around to how we would normally work, where we'd be kind of working to fill in kind of what Saul had written or whatever and to sort of catch up with what he was doing the whole yeah. time. This time he was trying to sort of like uh, just lend the whole thing some cohesion and and just emulate what we were doing basically. And I think that's what's made it kind of the first, I guess it's the first record that's really like a band record, you know? Mm -hmm. It's not like Saul's music, my lyrics, Nathan coloring in the gaps. It's kind of like all three of us having a kind of like a real stake in it in a different way and and so did you join uh, the guys in sheffield because i don't know the exact no, i didn't move up there to live okay i thought about it but uh I, I, I just went up there to record okay yeah 
because of this separation that you, that you went for kind of going up north, uh, how important was that to kind of get this album done? I think it was essential. I think it was a, a, a we had absolutely no choice in that really. I mean, you can you can the space up there is so cheap, and what we needed was time. You know, we didn't have some mad record deal. It was enough to sort of to, to do something quite basic on. You know, mm. and. Uh, up there meant we could buy ourselves a year, two years. You know, you can rent a five-bedroom house in Sheffield for the same price as a single room in South London. Mm. You know, and a studio space because it's all abandoned industry. You can just get for nothing. I think we were paying something like thirty-five pounds a week for our first studio room. It was nothing. You know, so it was like, okay, well, we can spend as long as we like, and it's not distract. There's no distractions up there. There's a small, tight-knit musical community, but no parties or anything like that. We weren't really socialising. It was just. We were just sort of working, and that was it, you know. And if we were going to go and get fucked up, we'd do it in London at the weekend or something, you know. We got fucked up by doing music more this time. So there's lots of like getting high to ketamine box, psychedelics, weed, uh, and well, then playing music, which instead of going out to get smashed, we just stayed in and did music and got smashed. Yeah. Because th th that's what I read that that you uh, substituted some of the harder drugs for for uh, the kind of the yeah. The it's more funny we talk about it like we got clean in Sheffield. <laughs> that's the way, it was, but that's kind of how we feel about but it. Used, we, <laughs> used, <laughs> we used the narcotics to work instead of like to not work. Because that, that's always the question, right? In in terms of creativity and, and substance abuse, w were you worried that that your creativity might be affected by by uh, changing your lifestyle? Uh, no, I think the most creative periods we've, oh, I think it's probably something we've all got in common is that it's usually <coughs> when we're kind of like, at our, everybody's like really sober, okay. you know, like often trips to like Norway or whatever, or when we went to Spain when we were younger or Algeria where we went before, it's kind of usually a period of like isolation and it's kind of, and, and peace and then you can hear yourself think, I, I find is usually the most, the most creative period really. And then, so in the studio, what, what were those um, weeks like? I don't know how long you spent there, but but uh, was there a lot of experimenting before songs started to get fleshed out? Fleshed out. Yeah, lots of it. What were you looking for in terms of music, in terms of structure? I don't, what what? Just, uh, I guess we were looking for a bit more direct sound, a bit more poppy, I guess, okay. but still fucked up. Hmm. I mean, if he does lyrics on anything, it'll always be a bit fucked up. That pop, uh, you mentioned the word poppy, and that word uh, was mentioned in the bio as well. And, and what do you, what constitutes as poppy to you? I think it's, again, it's just relative to what we've done previously. And hmm. so it's poppy compared to songs for our mothers. Compared to Miley Cyrus's latest drop, it's probably not that poppy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, she doesn't do pop, man. She's shit. <laughs> but I, I can uh, hear, hear somewhat of a, I don't know if it's accessibility is, is the right word, but there is a certain... Uh, yeah, it's more seductive. Mm. I think generally it's, it's more like, it's just far, I think it's, it's far more melodic mm. and like it's less submerged. Like yeah, it's it's not buried in it's not it's not a lo-fi record, and it's not we haven't buried all the uh, vocals with effects so that you can't hear what the lyrics are, and mm. it's more melodious, and therefore it's more more poppy. Mm. And talking about the lyrics, then, uh, Lewis, is it, is it fair to say that you delved more into yourself than than you have done before? Yeah, I think that's kind of expected, isn't it? Mm. You know. I mean, what what else have you got to write about, really? Well, the, kind of authority. Yeah. Because uh, you mentioned kind of the an album being a certain representation of a, of a time. So this album is is it a representation of the last two years and kind of what you went through as a band? Yeah, that's all. That's all in there. Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, it's all just every everything's uh, through that prism. Yeah, all of it. There's a couple of songs I want to get into a little bit. Um, a little bit uh, deeper. I, in I believe in something better. There's a, there's a line I see the misery of progress. Mm -hmm. I wonder yeah, where everyone that keeps line. talking about that. Oh, is it? People like that. One, that right? song's about well, Ted. We can talk about but that about song's about Ted one, Kaczynski, the Unabomber. Oh, okay. So yeah. it's written from his perspective. Mm. So he he believes in something better, really. Or oh, that's yeah. you know that's what that's 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 what that's about. 
it's our environmental song. Okay. Well, if you've talked about it a lot uh, before, then I'll, I'll pick uh, another one. No, it's line. fine. I don't mind. I don't mind. We've talked about We've talked about all of them quite a bit. Okay. Um. <laughs> Infinity and beyond, bye. Well, the, the, that's just, a, the, I, I suppose, the line that sticks out. But yeah. um, then in, in, the, in the first single, I think, uh, Feet, there's a line. Um, Down here in the darkness, we assume the best, refuse every kindness. Mm -hmm. Where's that line from? Where is it from? Well, or, or where, where, kind of, how did you come up? Yeah, where, <laughs> within yourself. Uh, just from within the within the, the left the, bollock. The deep, <laughs> within, within the left bollock, I think that one. I, <laughs> um, uh, I, I don't know, man. You know what I mean? You just kind of write this stuff down. I don't know where it comes from. I mean, I do. I do a lot of reading, and like I like to reference a lot of stuff. And what's the lyric? Sort of, Down in the darkness. We assume the best. Refuse every kind of swallow your distress. It's just a nice rhyme, isn't it? <laughs> it, is your writing style then uh, can I assume it's, it's more of a stream of consciousness uh, type a little thing? bit I try and like I try and get like a character down okay. or something you know like a kind of confused kind of schizophrenic sort of uh, you know uh, wanderer that was the sort of idea generally mm. and uh, nothing too kind of concrete uh, doesn't stay still long enough to make sense out of it kind of just as a loose idea um, so nothing too specific. So I don't, I don't. Yeah, I don't really know how to answer that. Uh. Okay. But it's, so is, is that's that a long not answer. <laughs> that is a fucking <laughs> long not answer. Watch. Can I go for a piss? Uh, no, let's just finish it. Just, yeah, two man. minutes and oh. we're done. This is, we're almost done. Um, then the title serves up. Yeah. Uh, that title. When in the process did that title pop up? Well, at the end, really. Uh, but no, about halfway through. What the title? Yeah. Well, that came out of nowhere. Man. Yeah, my my mate, my mate, my mate just my mate said it <coughs> in a he, in the conversation we were having, and we just took it for the title. But um, I guess the, the surf up title was really a kind of it's really a kind of joke about the rise of kind of populism and mm. Brexit and. You know the the people rising up and selecting the wrong kind of revolution. Well, th th that's an interesting thought because well, in terms of revolution, we we tend to think that it's always for the better for some reason. But yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's seldom it's it's seldom is. I mean, I guess the difference between this one and previous revolutions is that there's not a whole lot of idealism on display. Just a lot of shouting back and forth. A lot of anger. A lot of anger. Uh, not, not really. I don't know what what the proposed direction is. Usually, there's some sort of like utopian like project afoot. But this is kind of like uh, we just can't be fucking be like bothered anymore, which is a kind of odd, odd, odd one. Difficult to, yep. difficult to know where you stand with it all. <laughs> 